Hello guys, in this video I will showcase and analyze an open sourced project called Larabug, larabug.com, it exists, but recently its author Dennis announced on Twitter that he decided to make the code open source and now have a repository of relatively large Laravel application and may take a look and maybe we can learn a thing or two from that. Initially, the repository was created a really long time ago and I remember I interviewed Dennis for my older blog back in 2016 and even the author, I will zoom it in, even the author describes that it's very old code. So he's kind of pointing that there's nothing to learn from, but I disagree. I've seen various parts of that application and I think I have some advice, not for Dennis, but for you guys based on Dennis's code. Let's take a look. As usual, I start every analysis of every project from the routes, and in the routes, one thing that I want to point out, did you know that there is a route permanent redirect? And what is the difference between route redirect and route permanent redirect? If we go to routing documentation of Laravel, there's route redirect and route permanent redirect. The difference is what status code it returns to the browser. By default, route redirect is 302, but if you want it to be 301, this may be important for SEO purposes, you may use route permanent redirect. So that's a small thing number one that I've noticed. Thing number two that I want to show is getting the list of exceptions. This project, it's all about bug catching, or in other words, exceptions, and exceptions are related to the projects. So if you want to have a list of exceptions by project, this is the method of the controller. And it has a parameter of ID, which I would probably rename to project ID to clarify and see what it does. Authenticated user then gets the projects with has many relationship and only then find the project. And on top of that, we get only ID and title of the project. So see how much is happening in one liner, in one sentence, instead of doing project where user ID, select ID title or something. So I do enjoy those one liners using all the eloquent power and all the parameters. Now we get the exceptions from that project. Again, this is much shorter than doing exceptions where project ID. We have the project, so why don't we use has many? This is cool. Then there's a filter that if there's no status, we just show the bugs that are not done and fixed. But if we do have some filter, we use the filter. And for filter, it's using a package called Eloquent Filter. This one by Tucker Eric. Pretty old, but still working and updated. So it allows you, instead of having a lot of where statements, do something like this. Take all the request parameters and use them as a filter here. And also there's paginate filter. Thing number three I wanted to show is how to structure your model so that controller would be more readable. And there are two examples one by one. So first we're checking the status of whether it's opened or not. And in here I really enjoy these constants from model or from whatever. If we go to exception model, on top we have some constants. These ones, so open, red, fixed and done. And it may sound silly, so we're assigning the same variables to the same letters. Why do we do that? But how readable is the controller? Instead of having status as like status one or something like that, we have the constant, which may change in the future. So this may become a number, may become a different status, whatever. Or for it to be reused in various places, in various controllers, you have one constant and then use it everywhere. And then whenever we want to change the value, you change the value only in the model and controllers don't change. And also there are various methods. It's kind of like getters and setters pattern in object oriented programming. So there is a method is marked as mailed, is marked as mailed, which just return this mailed or not so boolean. And again, it sounds like we're overcomplicating things here, right? But no, I'm a really big fan of readable controllers. Is marked as mailed is perfectly clear. If it would be just if exception mailed, it has some 10% or 20% chance of not being exactly clear what mailed is. This with is marked as mailed is more readable in my opinion. Next thing I wanted to show you is this beauty, this eloquent query in the group controller. So there is a thing called project group and then they have projects and every project has exceptions. So this query queries all of them in one sentence. Let's dissect it into different parts. So logged in user, project groups is a has many relationship. 
and then it loads with projects which is again has many relationship but then the fun part starts when loading the relationship we can define some conditions for example query latest last error at means that the projects would be ordered by last error at descending which means the last error is the most crucial to see and then we dive even deeper one level so we query projects with exceptions and again we can add where conditions so another filter of exceptions so only open exceptions or where status null for some reason and to avoid too large amount of data we select only the fields that we need so see how much can be done in one eloquent statement and another example of such one-liner or one sentence this time using eloquent collections is to form the report the chart exception chart should return how many exceptions were there per day and look how it happens we query the exceptions then only the latest seven days oldest means ordering by created at ascending then we select only created at we don't care about anything else and we don't need that data we need only the date then we get all the exceptions and then we have eloquent result a collection and then two filters two additional functions on eloquent collection so this happens from the database these two are after database so we're working in php and laravel with collections so first thing we do we group by date so we have created at and by default it is a carbon object so we can use immediately format and then we map through all the exceptions it's kind of like for each but assigning new values to that and instead of returning all the exceptions we return exceptions count so the result is a collection of dates and amount of exceptions per date again one complex but elegant sentence so these are a few things i pointed out from the repository without digging deeper on what it does if you want to see full repository it's open source and i will link that in the description and if we get back to dennis's twitter message also i think he deserves some credits for making it open source so you can check out his profile follow him on twitter he also is a creator and founder of a few more projects like ploy and documentator so check them out as well and also subscribe to my channel, follow my news on Twitter. You can follow me at Pavelas Corp. I'm pretty active on Twitter with Laravel News, so check them out as well and see you guys in other videos.